Testing one two three four. Testing one two three four. Mic check one two one two. Hey there, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Airgun Reporter. My name is Paul Capello. For today's episode, we're going to check out the twenty-two caliber Valter Terrace. This is a new brake barrel from uh, Valter. It came out uh, in the spring, I believe. And for today's episode, we're going to be doing it guerrilla style. I don't mean this guerrilla over here, but we're going to be doing some uh, guerrilla video making here, just using a handy cam giving uh, you folks out there our take on this new rifle and that's it no fancy editing no fancy graphics we're just gonna tell you the scoop on this gun so we have guy over here taking the first few shots on the terrace as a matter of fact you still have that hangy tag on there don't you mm-hmm oh okay she's brand new right out of the box all right so he's taking a couple shots to see if this thing is dieseling uh, let's get set up and we'll be right back Taking the first shot with the terrace here. Well, it's uh, that's almost on, right out of the box. Yeah. We haven't adjusted the sight yet. Barrel has good lockup. There's a little bit of dieseling, but nothing excessive. How far away is that target? Uh, about 15, maybe. 15 yards. Okay. Automatic safety gets me every time. doing pretty well. Yeah, I don't hear any twang or anything like that. No, it's, it feels pretty smooth. I thought it would be a little bit twangier with the plastic stock, but I mean, that's, it's solid. Yeah, it's a good stock. Yeah, it's not and hollow it's, feeling. And it's available in wood too, isn't it? Yeah, it is. See, I prefer the wood. M me too. Yeah. Oh, you already know that. I'm a wood guy. It's I think it likes this pellet. I'm shooting a JSB Exact 18.1 grain, the jumbos. Nice. I'm doing well. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. I'm not a huge fan of the fiber optic sights. I'd rather just straight irons, but they'll do. All right, let me get to the bench and uh, give you my first impressions. I'm going to hand the camera to Guy, and uh, we'll carry on. All right, let me take a couple of shots with the terrace here. Um, I'm going to take this hanging tag off. I'm sorry stop sign on there stop don't shoot it okay oh. lock up is good chisel it's chisel detent all right easy to cock not hard at all okay nice and smooth all right it's on safe before we do anything we didn't do this before but i'm just going to check those screws and make sure stock is tight am I actually no I'm not because it's an allen head screw so after the first couple shots we'll check uh, the stock screws which I like to do uh, whenever I'm shooting springers right out of the box they do come loose just from from uh, manufacturing and that can throw off your shot quite a bit so always check those stock screws you giving a six o'clock hold on that bead uh, right here, yeah, six o'clock on a bullseye, okay. dude. I'm grouping with yours as well. Good. The action is smooth. I'm, I'm surprised. It's got a nice sound to it too. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no honking. The, um, the seal isn't honking, so that means there's, there's good lubrication in there, which is always a good sign. Because the last thing you want to do is to have to tear this thing down as soon as you buy it and uh, start lubricating parts just because it wasn't done by the manufacturer. But this is Walter, so I'm sure they've, they've taken care of it. Hmm. Pretty good so far. I'm smelling some, some dieseling a little bit, but that will clear up. Uh, what we like to do to clear up the dieseling is... Uh, Shoot about 50 rounds of heavy pellets through it, something like a, like a Beeman Kodiak or something like that, or a H&M Barracuda, something, something a little heavier in 22. 
Nice. All right, I'll tell you my first impressions of this. Well, first of all, both Guy and I agree that uh, we prefer the wood stock. Uh, secondly, I wish it had uh, iron sights. Not a big fan of uh, fiber optic sights on, uh, on brake barrel air guns. This is guaranteed to bust off on you. You lean it up against a tree, you know, it slips, it's gone. I feel the same way. I'm not a big fan of fiber optics on yeah. a gun. Yeah, I don't know why they continue to put them on there, but, uh, you know, I just don't like it. All right, what are we doing here, guy? Checking out those uh, screws? Yeah, we're just going to check them, and a positive is that they're, they're tight. That's good. Somebody was paying attention. Nice. Even the fronts, they're usually always loose on any gun. Yeah. Well, they're paying attention at the factory. All right, folks, we have the Crony set up here. What pellets are you using again? Uh, H&N Field Target Trophies. And what's the grain weight on those? 14.66. 14.66, I'll guess about, we're doing about 680, 685. Yeah, somewhere mid six, mid sixes, maybe high. Okay. We'll see. All right, let me get behind you here. Safety first. Boy, that sun's beating down today, isn't it? Yeah, it's warm. <laughs> this is so nice holding this little camera. Don't have to have that big camera setting it up, and mm -hmm. you know, we don't know microphones. This is nice. All right, hold on. Safety glasses. All right, I'm good. Six fifty-three. All right. Let's see how consistently this thing shoots. You can do a string of ten. Yeah. Okay. How's it going in the breech? How's that feel? Uh, they feel good. They're yeah. not overly tight, but they're they're snug. Yeah. Six fifty-six. Oh. Three FPS spread. Not bad. Mechanically, it sounds real good. The lockup sounds real good. Yeah. Um, when you break it open and it locks up, nice click to it. Yeah, you know, it's got smooth cocking. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's probably a what, 12, 14 foot pound gun. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Duplicate. Duplicate. Six fifty eight. All right. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. All right. Let's let him shoot, and we'll come back and give you folks the chronic results. We got this 650. 650. Wow. Eight foot per second extreme spread. That is great. That's outstanding. For a rifle out of the box? Yeah. A $200 rifle out of the box. That's great. So far, it's. Uh, it's impressive. Yeah, shooting consistently. Yeah. I think the mechanics are real good on this gun. We got to get a scope on this thing and see what it's going to do. Yeah, definitely. Should we run through the crowning numbers with the folks? Just go through them? Sure. Do a review? Okay. What do we got here? 653, 654, 657, 658, 57, wow, that's awesome, the high was 658, the low was 650, average 655, stream spread 8 feet per second, Standard deviation? Two. Two. Holy cow. That's really good for a Springer. Um, now that we did the crony, let's um, go ahead and uh, you want to mount the scope on it? Yeah, we'll mount a scope on it and shoot some groups. All right. Um, we're going to be putting uh, one of my old school scopes on this. It's just, uh, just an old uh, BSA optic scope. It's lasted through so many Springers, I can't tell you how many. And it's never broken. So I'm going to put it on this rifle. Uh, my first impressions, this is a, kind of a gentle shooting rifle. This is not a high-powered, uh, you know, gas ram, nitro piston, or reaxis piston. I think those BKL rings we're using on it will do the trick. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, let's go ahead and mount it up, and we'll uh, we'll take some shots down range. We got their uh, double strap BKL rings. Yep, one of the only two-piece rings I recommend. Yeah, great for rim fire too. <laughs> yeah, the BKLs are actually unique in that you need to. There's a hole on the other side, and you have to actually spread the dovetail to get it on there. Mm -hmm. So they're they're actually clamped tight before you even tighten the the screws. All right, folks, we were very surprised by the numbers we saw with the uh, Volter Terrace. 
Man, extreme spread of eight feet per second. Standard deviation of two. That's just amazing. It's shooting like a tuned rifle right out of the box. This is a tuned rifle. What I have here is my old uh, RWS Model 34. It's got a Makari seal and a Vortec kit, which is a spring and a special sleeve that makes the gun shoot consistently and smoothly. And I've been shooting some pellets over the crony here. It's all within three feet per second. Let me take a couple shots and we'll show you folks. I'm using the same uh, field target trophies. And I think this is my fourth shot. Duplicate, 684. Take a couple more shots. I won't do a string of 10, but just to show you folks how consistently attuned and very well broken in German air rifle shoots. Really good. Again, within, uh, say, about uh, 7 feet per second. Let's take a look what we got over here. Let's see. Review. 1 to 4. 684. 684. 682. 685. High of 685. Low of 678. Average 682. Extreme spread 7 feet per second. Standard deviation 2. Really good. Okay, now that we have the, uh, the scope mounted on the, on the terrace, let's go ahead and shoot it and uh, sight it in and see how it does. That fellow just went in the same damn hole. Oh, that's nice. All right, folks, now that guy has this uh, rifle sighted in, I'm going to take uh, 10 shots and, and see how this rifle does. So far, he's doing pretty good. We've got, uh, I think, two or three of them went in the same hole. Nice. Uh, granted, we're not that far out. We're at uh, squirrel hunting distances here. And uh, I've got a reactive target set up downrange. There's going to be no picture in picture here. We're going to take our 10 shots, go down there, point the camera at it. Just going to have to take our word for it. I think after this many years, you folks can trust us. So uh, let me go ahead and take a few shots. 600. Same hole as the first one. And uh, as usual, I'm using the classic artillery hold. I'm not gripping the forestock. Just resting it on my open palm, the butt stock up against my shoulder, not too tight, just tight enough to uh, hold it steady. And uh, kind of just letting the rifle do what it wants. I think we have a nickel or a quarter sized group happening down there. Here, guy's like shaking his head off camera here because uh, I think he's liking this rifle so far. <laughs> it's a shooter. It's a shooter. All right, let me see if I can keep that up. This rifle just seems to want to shoot out the red bullseye. Man, that is just so kick ass. I can't believe this rifle. You know, if someone handed this to me and uh, didn't tell me that it was right out of the box, I would have said, so how long did you spend tuning this thing? It's amazing. I mean, let me tell you, and very few rifles out of the box, brake barrel air rifles that guy and me have come across have shot this well. Um, the proof is in the target downrange. Uh, we'll go down there and show it to you, but let me take a few more shots. That red bullseye is almost gone. Man, hopefully uh, our little sticky target doesn't fall off. That's happened to me too. And I start cursing and son of a Looks like it's hanging on though. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Man, I like it. I like it. If it weren't for those uh, fiber optic sights, man. Man. <clears throat> It's just going in the same hole. And it's, you know. and we could see it from here, the uh, shoot and see target, and uh, it's it's right in the center of that target, man. Here's where I ruin it, right? I mean. You'd swear it wasn't even hitting the target. Yeah. The but but I could see the paper move. Oh, there's the one that threw me off. 
<laughs> it went about a half inch to the left. All right, folks, this is the first uh, target I shot. This group here represents about uh, seven shots, I believe. And then I started getting, uh, you know, confident. Then, of course, I ruined the group by shooting those there, going around the target. <laughs> All right, well, we sighted in the Valter Terrace, and I shot two groups with it. Let me tell you, we just grabbed a tin of pellets, these uh, field target trophies here. And uh, you, don't, you never know what your rifle's going to like, especially a brake barrel. Yeah, it's doing real well with them, and we don't even know if it's its, it's favorite pellet yet. Yeah, we don't even know. And uh, we just shot those two groups I showed you. So far, I have to say, man, you know, I wasn't even thinking about the trigger. I was watching the bullseye, watching my crosshairs, and, you know, uh, thinking about my breathing. And soon as my crosshairs, you know, with my breathing, came up to the bullseye, bang, it just fired. I wasn't even thinking about the trigger. That's how good it is. Yeah, it, um, for the price point of the rifle, I know everybody's gonna complain that the, it's got a plastic blade. That's a non-issue. Who cares? Um, actually, in the winter, I prefer a plastic blade when I'm hunting. Yeah. Metal triggers get darn cold in they the winter. They get cold, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, I wasn't even thinking about the trigger until we just set up this camera. And I said, hey, guy, let's talk about the trigger. And it just came to me that as I was shooting, I wasn't even thinking about it. and. That's surprising to me because usually I'm, I'm thinking about both. I'm thinking about my hold, my breathing, my finger on the trigger, the position of my finger on the blade, and um, the release of the trigger and the pull through. With this, it just it just shot every time I wanted it to. And I, I didn't even think about it after I took the shot. I was just so amazed that it was knocking out that bullseye. Well, that has a lot to do with the fact that it has a decent trigger from the factory. Mm -hmm. When you shoot as many guns as we do, you yeah. tend to become what they call a trigger snob. Or, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's the first thing you notice on an air gun. It's true, yeah. So, it's this isn't bad. Yeah, a lot of folks complained about the T05 triggers on these uh, RWS models. Um, but you know what? Just keep shooting it. It breaks in. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see this thing having to break in this trigger. This is, I'm just, uh, you know what? I gotta say something right here, man. For for two hundred dollars plus tax, this mm -hmm. thing is a winner. This thing is this is a great squirrel hunting rifle. So far, so good, man. What else can we say about this gun? Do you wanna um, take a few shots and let me uh, find out what your thoughts are on the trigger? Yeah. Now that we've me... discussed it, and yeah. All right. Let's shoot a group or two with it, and okay. I already know that I like it. You're, <laughs> and you're, and again, guys, a lefty. This is an ambidextrous rifle. Doesn't have to worry about the, the comb, doesn't have to worry about uh, anything else. I'll try to keep real still. Suck in my gut. You want to know something too? Uh, when you sighted it in, it was shooting a little bit to the right for me. Mm -hmm. So I gave it a, a five or six clicks to the left. So maybe... Uh, We've said that in a couple yeah. of our reviews. When we you get a gun perfectly sighted in, it's always to the left for me, and it's always to the right for yeah. you when I sight it. It's the same thing. So you might want to hold a little bit more right, and you might hit that uh, bullseye. Yeah. Oh, but, I'm shaking uh, a little bit here today, yeah. too, though. Just think about the trigger. Don't worry about the target. Tell me what you think. Uh, Two-stage adjustable, I think. Uh, yes. There we go. I aimed a little bit right, put it right in the center. Same hole. You know, when I first picked up the, the terrace, um, it felt a little bit awkward because it has that big swell in the front here on the forearm. And uh, I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but it's comfortable. It, it, it didn't even occur to me the second time I picked it up. Yeah, it actually lends itself well to the artillery hold because it fills your hand up. Yeah, that's for sure. Nice. You're grouping over there. Yep. We're going to have to bring that up here and uh, show the folks. Take uh, another shot or two. And... Still smoking for you there? A little bit. Yeah. It's not too bad. It's not detonating. So. Right. All right. And it doesn't seem to be throwing off our shots. Just a little bit of smoke, uh, residual uh, factory oils. <laughs> right there. Yeah. And like you said, you don't even really have to think about it. It seems to shoot better. Mm -hmm. 
if you just roll with your shakiness and as soon as it drifts into the bullseye, touch the trigger. It goes where you want it to go. Yeah. The bullseye? The bullseye. The bullseye. The bullseye. You're killing the same group, right? Yeah. I think that was three, three, three holes touching. All right. How loud is this thing? I don't even know. I'd, I'd, I'd say it's under, it's under 100 decibels. Yeah, I'm gonna say low 90s. Yeah. It just makes a thunk. Well, maybe low 90s, but maybe, maybe close to 98, I'd say. Hey, Paul, why don't you break out your sound meter? Huh? This is the Rogue Chronicles of Airgun Reporter, anyway. It is. <laughs> uh, uh, let's talk about the um, the front of that muzzle. It's got a uh, threaded cap on it. Yeah. Is that for, for the European market? For the European market, it's threaded uh, half 20 standard threads. I don't even understand why they silence a rifle this quiet. It's not even worth silencing this rifle. You're going to hear more mechanical noise than anything. Right. You know, it's just going to come all from the uh, compression tube and. Not out of the end of the barrel, so I mean, it might make it a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say? I don't have a silencer, but uh, this gun is quiet. I mean, no. Holy cow! We're just having fun with this rifle, man. We're just shooting it, and we're just like, wow. I mean, I was not expecting it with this rifle. It's been sitting in my basement the entire summer. It even had cobwebs on it when we took it out. Um, <laughs> guy over here, and guy's friend Bill is behind us watching us uh, tape the show here today. He's like, man, when's the last time you picked up this gun? I said, well, it's been a while. Gosh, what could we almost do? I, I feel like we could almost set up some small targets down there and knock them off. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some uh, spinner targets down range. I'll bring the camera down there uh, finally so you folks can see that uh, this gun is really shooting quite well at this distance. I'm going I'm to hold on to this brake barrel. I'm totally surprised. This is the first one that's come around in a long time that uh, has impressed us right out of the box. That group is nice. So yeah, you were, first group with it, the one I called that flyer before it ever hit. So yeah, I saw I that. I knew you pulled that one. Yeah, look at that. Did really good, man. All right, let's wrap this show up, man. This is uh, this has been a fun episode. Just real freestyle again with just one camera, us shooting some targets, talking about the rifle. That's the way it should be. Uh, I've done some a lot of fancy stuff in the past, and I've really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy making those uh, highly produced uh, shows. I'll go first, the pros and cons. Okay. Um, like I said before, my initial impression when I first picked it up, this uh, palm swell, was a little bit awkward. I was like, ah, what is this, this big swelly thing over here? But Guy made a good point. It lends itself very well to the artillery hold, which is uh, very important when shooting springers. You can't grip them like a deer rifle. They just don't shoot right. The stock is nice, the stock is solid, don't get me wrong. As far as uh, synthetic stocks goes, this is a nice one. It's solid. It doesn't feel like a junky piece of plastic. Again, fiber optic sights, not a big fan of them at all. I just don't like seeing them on, um, on springers. They don't belong on them. It, it's not as rugged as the rest of the gun. Um, the Model 34 comes with a post and globe. It's never bent. I've dropped this thing. I don't know how many times it's, it's fallen off the uh, tree when it was standing up or, uh, you know, I accidentally tip it over when it was up against the wall. My bad. Um, but fiber optic sights, they don't belong on it. Uh, it's definitely going to break on you with any sort of even very gentle handling of this rifle. Automatic safety, that doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm so used to the German rifles with their automatic safeties that to me it's uh, second nature. Some people might complain, but I don't have a problem with it personally. Um, you've got your, uh, your butt plate here. It's rubber. Uh, not really necessary, but makes it comfortable. This adjustment screw here for the uh, trigger travel. Eh, it sticks out a little bit, looks a little bit uh, you know, unfinished, but that's okay, not terrible. Again, why doesn't it have uh, you know, weaver mounts on it? That's the first thing I said, there's no Picatinny rail. But you know, after shooting it, I can say that it doesn't really need one. I mean, it's, it's not a, a harsh shooting rifle. Um, it's not tough to shoot accurately. I bet if you folks pick this up and shoot it out of the box, you might have the same exact results we had, which were very, very good. Give me your opinions on this one here. Well, I feel pretty much the same way. Uh, I would prefer the wood, but yeah. the stock is comfortable. Yeah. Um, decent trigger out of the box, like you. I don't like the fiber optic sights either, but I mean, at least they're made out of metal. Yeah. Um, the adjustment screw, it's mainly just for aesthetics. They could have put a set screw in it or something. Yeah. 
like you, the automatic safety doesn't bother me. You get right. used to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the dovetail rail seems to be fine. I mean, we used BKLs on it. Mm -hmm. They yeah. hold. It held. It didn't move at all. Yeah. Uh, mechanically, this gun is, is shooting real good. You saw those crony numbers. I like this rifle, man. I got to give it definitely two thumbs up. How about you? I agree. Yeah. It's definitely a, it's a game changer for guns in this price range. Definitely. All right, folks, if you're looking for your first break barrel or just one that shoots really good out of the box, you might have our 10 or 12 break barrels at home. This is the next one to get. It's really a nice rifle. Uh, imported by Umarex, I believe. Yep. And uh, manufactured by Walter in Germany. Doesn't it get any better than that, folks? Uh, that's it. So until next time, shoot safe. And have fun. That's right. Want to keep shooting? Yeah. All right. That was good. Yeah.